Welcome to Perspectives El Paso. I'm Professor Leon Blevins, Professor of Government at El Paso Community College, and I want you to regularly tune in and watch this program. Now, as you already know from watching the program from time to time, that I'm a teacher, but I'm also an actor. The character I'm best known for in El Paso is that of Uncle Sam. I want to start with a little story before I introduce our very wonderful guest today. And the story is that in 1972, I came back to El Paso to teach at Community College, and we te were teaching in old army barracks at Fort Bliss. Uh, about 70% of our student population was male, and most of those had just come back from the war in Vietnam. Some had fought in World War II and Korea, as well as in Vietnam. In 1973, I went to class one day, and I had a flag, an American flag, concealed behind the desk, and I had a penny. I pulled out the penny, and I read, I said, whose image is that? And they said, that's Abraham Lincoln. And then I threw the penny on the floor, and I stomped on it, and I said, to hell with you, damn you. And they were shocked, they didn't understand what I was doing. And then I picked it up, and I read what was on it, in God we trust. And I said, I just stomped all over the name of God. Doesn't that upset you? And they looked at me like I was crazy. And then I pulled out a flag that was about a third of the size of this flag that I have with me today. And I held it up like that. And then I started acting like I was going to put it on the floor behind the desk there. And I stomped on it. To, Damn you, to hell with you. And they started really getting upset and standing up to see if I was really stomping on it. And then I quickly pulled it up and I said, no, I didn't stomp on it. But why did you get upset over me doing this and not upset over the penny? And they said, I said, that's just a replica. And they began to say, it's not a replica, that's the American flag. Doesn't matter how big it is, it's the American flag. Suddenly in one class when I did that, a young man walks over, he'd been in Vietnam, he grabbed it out of my hand, he put it on the desk in front of me, and he began to fold it in the tri-corner form such as at a funeral. When he finished, he clicked his heels, saluted, and handed me the flag, and I looked around and almost every man in that room was crying. They were emotional about this piece of cloth, red, white, and blue, stars and stripes. I have with me a guest today, Jimmy Melver, who is also very emotional about the American flag. Jimmy, longtime friend, good to have you on the show with me today. You had not heard that story from no, me before. No, I have before. not. You would have been emotional too, wouldn't I you? I would, would be very much so because I was in the Army at the same time you were talking about that story. That's right. Now, Jimmy uh, is with a group called Flags Across America. Uh, back in 2002, I guess it was, you invited me to be out at Trans Mountain Campus for the dedication of a flag, a huge flag that is flying out there as we speak. That's correct. And um, here's something that was, this was actually 2004. Uh, what, Flags Across America? Here's something about 2002, 2003. Mm -hmm. And uh, some things came out in the newspaper even as late as June of 2004 about the flag. I don't know if they can pick this up on camera or not, but it shows up in the corner here, Blevins' Uncle Sam. That image also showed up in the New York Times, I found out, and got a copy later. And so there we are lifting that great big flag up to fly on that huge flagpole. And then this magazine comes out, and there's some information in here and an article uh, with Uncle Sam and some of the other members of your organization. Uh, El Paso chapter update. Right. Remember this, don't this, you? You yes. still have a copy of yes, this. Yes, I sure do. I still have a copy of that. Okay, so John Cook, and there was a big cake out there that said Flags Across America. That's now tell me about the organization and how you became a part of it and what your role in it is right now. Well, as, as most everyone remembers 9-11, where they were, I happened to be the director at the Northeast YMCA when that 9-11 took place. Uh, it was about a year after that when two guys came to visit me at the YMCA and said, you know, we need to raise some money to put a flag out in the Northeast since there are so many military people in the Northeast community. Right. And we would like for you to help us raise some money. And so we started a campaign to raise some money. And, and really, actually, we actually wanted to build uh, that flag site on the west side of, of Highway 54, which was actually on Fort Bliss property. Mm -hmm. But since that was at one time an artillery range, they would not allow us to, to build on that side of the, the freeway. So that's when we went to El Paso Community College, and Community College 
were so generous and saying that would be a wonderful idea to put a flag on the corner of Diana, Highway 54. So they actually gave us a lease for 99 years, four acres of land to uh, build it. Then came the process of going out into the community to raise that fund. And so you, Leon, came out to our groundbreaking uh, to establish where we were gonna put the flagpole. We started the campaign. It took us two years to actually raise enough money. So in December of 2003, we actually went and put up a beautiful 40 by 80 foot flag on that beautiful 180 foot flagpole. The 2004 picture that you're showing me in the El Paso time was our dedication to purchase a 50 by 100, 5,000 square foot flag. And that's when you came out and helped us with the dedication of the huge 5,000 square foot flag. And that was that day when we actually put that flag up. Yep. How many of us did it take to get the flag stretched out we, and then going up? We remember? actually had about, uh, I would say probably about 75 people out there holding that flag. Wow. That's how huge that flag is. Right. And, and of course, you know, El Paso being so windy, we have a, a hard time <laughs> trying to keep it from tearing. Right. We have yet to find one that doesn't tear, so we are constantly purchasing flags. And when we decided that when on a windy day we would put up a small flag, and the small flag we're talking 15 by 25, and it looks so small, everybody gets very disappointed when we put that <laughs> small. Sure. It almost looks like a postage stamp on that flagpole. Right. But anyway, uh, I am the current president of the El Paso, Texas Flags Across America. Uh, the last couple of years, we've made a lot of improvements to the flag site. We planted trees, we planted uh, benches, uh, and we actually have a World War II monument that was actually dedicated on September 2nd of 2009. September 2nd happened to be the, the day when World War II ended, so it was a very appropriate day to dedicate the World War II monument and it's named after William Haddad. William Haddad was a World War II veteran. And the interesting story about this is that a lot of people come to the flag side and always making suggestions, why don't you do this or why don't you do this? Well, my response always says we don't have the money to do a lot of things that people would like for us to do. Well, this man came up and said, I think it'd be nice if you built a World War II monument here at your flag site. And of course, I said, we don't have the money. So this man, who happened to be Fred Roberts, uh, said no. He said, I have the money. I'm trying to find a location to build a World War II monument. And so as we got to talking, come to find out, all three of them were Shriners. And they decided they were going to take on this project, and they got it on paper, went and got cost estimates, and then they, since all three of them were Shriners, they went to the Shrine Temple. Well, lo and behold, Shrine Temple has decided that they were going to put up their building for sale. So they couldn't build it there, so they went to Fort Bliss. Well, it took several years for the government to say no, and that's why they came to me. And so we actually uh, decided to build that monument there. Well, in 2006, William Haddad, who was never married, he's the one that actually put the money up. That's why it's named after him. And Bill Craig, who actually designed the monument, both of them passed away in 2006. Oh so the only one that was left was Fred Roberts, who was a trustee of this estate to build this World War II monument. And so Fred Roberts is the one that kind of uh, got the uh, uh, contractor and, and all the work to, to get this thing built. And like I said, it was dedicated in, in a year ago. Oh, well, now this is, uh October of 2010. Yes. We want to kind of put this in perspective, if anyone's watching this even five years from now. Uh, I'd like for you to give a telephone number, a website, or anything. You said you need money? Oh, we always need money. We, in fact, we just purchased a uh, $5,000 flag. Uh, we also fly a smaller flag. Uh, in fact, right now, we're trying to raise some money to buy some more flags. 
Um, the telephone number is 915-549-5031. 915-549-5031 is my phone number. Our webpage is elpasoflag.org. Uh, if you go to our webpage, you could actually click on there and, and see how you could help us with donations to the flag. Uh, we have a wonderful uh, brick program underneath the flag. We, have, we currently have about 500 bricks under the flag in memory of your loved ones. In fact, I have some for my own grandkids. And so it, the bricks are $100, uh, the benches are $350, and a lot of the people have bought a, a bench with in memory of their loved ones. Uh, Joe Moody has been kind enough to buy a tree and also a bench. Uh, Joe Concrete has been a wonderful, wonderful supporter. Ever since we started, he's been there to provide us with the sand and the concrete, whatever we need, he always provides it. Uh, Tropicana Home came through and helped us cut a driveway at, at the entrance. Uh, so there's been lots and lots of people in the community that have come forward and helped us out. No one person could do all this alone, obviously. No, certainly, certainly. No, no one can do it alone. Um, we, when we got started, there was actually, uh, Bob Soltis was a, the front runner of this uh, organization. Uh, Tony Lewis, uh, with Tony Lewis Body Shop on the Northeast. He was the president of the Northeast Business Alliance. So he got the Business Alliance people to, to come on board and help us raise money. And he's the one that actually had our first fundraiser at his shop to help raise the money uh, about two years prior to actually putting up the flagpole. A number of years ago, my wife Shannon and I were out in the Northeast at a replica of the Vietnam Memorial Wall. Yes. I know that you were there for some yes. of that. And uh, that was one of the most touching moments we ever had, or I ever had as, mm -hmm. as Uncle Sam. And I remember that there was a big flag there that was lifted up into the air by a, a fire truck. Fire truck, right. Tell us, and I've been with you on a number of different programs sure. where this has been true. Tell us about the fire truck and getting the fire truck to lift that flag. Yes. Um, basically, you know, when there are special events around in the city, um, the fire department doesn't have a flag like we do. So we provide the flag and the fire department provides the ladder truck and normally they bring a 100-foot lila truck out to the event as this weekend we'll be at the Amiga Air Show. And so we fly a, a 30 by 60 flag off of the ladder truck. And so for any kind of an event, we go out and fly the flag. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about networking. You mentioned the Shriners helped you a good bit on this project with the flag. Uh, tell me about any other organizations. I, I, I believe that you're with the Rotary Club and you're involved with the uh, West Side um, Fourth of July Parade. I remember a few years ago, the El Paso Times called you something like Mr. Fourth of July. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I was very, very fortunate to be on the, the front cover of the Fourth uh, of July issue of the El Paso Times. Wow. Uh, I'm originally from Japan and I always tell people you won't find a more patriotic individual than myself because I love this country uh, for what it stands for. Uh, in fact, on the personal side, I, I was naturalized in 1955, and I can remember uh, the judge having us all raise our right hand, and I can remember the speech he made to all of us. He says, will you be willing to give up your right arm for your country? And I looked at my mother and I said, Mom, do I have to give up my right arm to become an American <laughs> citizen? I was 11 years of age, and I thought they were going to take my right arm oh, to become no. an American citizen. So my mother says, no, son, you see you later in life. Well, that later in life was when I received my draft notice during the Vietnam War. I got drafted, and my mother says, remember when that judge says you'd be willing to give up your right arm? Well, you're going in the Army, son. So that's how I became a, a citizen. Wow, what a story. Did you go to Vietnam? Did you serve in Vietnam? No, I did not actually serve in Vietnam. I, was, I served stateside. Stateside. Uh, what about the Rotary Club? Let's, let's the talk Rotary Club, it. yes. Rotary Club is a wonderful, wonderful organization. They do so many wonderful things in the community. Uh, there are actually seven Rotary Clubs in, in El Paso. I am a lieutenant governor in, in the district. I hold a district position. So I work with 15 Rotary Clubs in, in our district. 
Uh, in fact, uh, we are currently, my club, which is the Northeast Rotary Club, is working on a literacy project where we're going to give 1,000 books to Barone Elementary School next week. And so uh, we just got finished with our celebrity chef. This is where we actually bring some of the top chefs in town. Uh, there were 16 stations at the convention center and people paid $100 to attend this function. Wonderful, wonderful event, raised lots of money. And for the last four years, we have given 75,000 each year to Texas Tech uh, Foster Medical School. And we have established a scholarship program and with the understanding that if you receive the Rotarian scholarship, that you must stay in El Paso for five years. Now, will it be too confusing if I ask you to give a telephone number or website for Rotary? Well, actually, the Rotary actually has their own phone numbers for each of the club. Oh, okay. So I, I would just say, you know, contact my phone number, which is 549-5031. And I will, if, depending on where a person lives, you know, I could direct them to the club on the east side. We actually have two clubs on the east side, two clubs on the west side, two clubs in the northeast, and one downtown. So depending on where you work or where you live, you know, some people prefer to go to a club within their, in the area they live at. So just contact me and I will get you. And in, in fact, I would love to take you, you know, anyone that's interested in Rotary to, to a luncheon or a breakfast. You do know we have a friendly rivalry, don't you, that I've led the East Side Parade for the Lions Club for many years. And, yes. and one occasion uh, when they, uh, the Rotary Club had their parade like on a Saturday, and then the east side had on Sunday, I did two parades right. back to back. That was this year. <laughs> no, not this year. That was several years ago. Okay. It happened again. And I wasn't able to do it this year to be at both parades. But uh, we get along together oh, in yes. spite of that fact. <laughs> right. Yeah, the, the, the west side has the rotary parade. And so we're very fortunate. And again, we fly the beautiful flag. And, and if you live on the west side, people might know North Mesa where you make the cardiac climb yes, sir. going towards Coronado High School. Well, let me tell you, when you're coming up that hill and you see that beautiful flag that's waving right across North Mesa, it's the most beautiful sight to see. Mm -hmm. And what a beautiful day you know, to celebrate 4th of July. And, and, and I always enjoy when you're out there in the parade, you know. And I've seen you so many times in parades and some bow parades. And in, in fact, you have come to our Northeaster parade that we have out in Northeast. Yes, there have been occasions I was able to get out there. So, you know, parades are wonderful and it's something that I think kids enjoy coming to a parade. And so. Now, why don't you tell me or tell the audience how we met? Well, actually, the way we met was I actually got to see the uh, pageantry, Easter pageantry at McKelligan Canyon. And I mentioned that I would love to sing into it. And, and so I think we, we went to I ran into you at, at a restaurant out in Northeast after the, one of your performances, and you were still had your makeup on. Now, I, I was not was, doing Uncle Sam in that performance. No, 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 you were not. <laughs> I was performing as Jesus in an Easter pageant. That's My right. wife, Shanna, was the director of that, and we were at the Village Inn, and you were sitting over there, and you saw, saw yeah, me there saw with the there. makeup still on, no costume, but makeup still <laughs> on, and you came walking over and complimented about the production. And then you said you were a singer and you'd love, love to be sing. in it. And I said, well, you're, here's the director right here. So my wife enlisted you. Yeah, you were ready to sing. So the next year you rehearsed with us and sang with us. That was the most wonderful, wonderful experience. You know, uh, it, it makes you really feel good, you know, when you're in the pageantry itself. And mm -hmm. so, and what better opportunity than right there in McElligan Canyon, you know, and it's wonderful that you and your wife put those performance on. In fact, I went to your church, in fact, uh, when I was working for El Paso Natural Gas, uh, there were several people that went to your church, and they're the ones that actually they invited really me to, you know, to your church. One time I was at a flea market in the Northeast, and I was looking at a table, and a young boy walks up and says, uh, aren't, you, aren't you Uncle Sam? And I said, yes, where did you see me? And I think he said, Fannin Elementary School. And I step to the next place, he walks <laughs> away, and a young boy comes up, and he says, aren't you Jesus? <laughs> and I said, yes, 
bless you, my son, tapped him on the head, and he walked away, and I felt real strange. <laughs> At one table, I was Uncle Sam, and the next table, I was Jesus. That's what happens when you're an actor. That's right. And then another time, I was going to blood drive over by Sierra Hospital, and I was mm -hmm. dressed as Uncle Sam. Firefighters from New York were coming down mm -hmm. that were in 9-11, and uh, go into uh, the pharmacy next to the Sierra there, and uh, a wo young woman, uh, a comment said, I'm Jesus. I'm walking in here, it's Jesus coming in. And I, and I was half dressed as Uncle Sam. Didn't have my jacket and hat on yet, just my uh, suspenders and shirt and pants. And so uh, sometimes I run into this uh, difficulty of knowing who I <laughs> am from day to day. <laughs> so today here I'm as Uncle Sam, and here you are as Jimmy Melver. That's right. An all American, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> yes, I, I love the country for what it stands for and the freedom that we enjoy, you know. And so when you when you look at all the soldiers who's fighting for our freedom and and it's sad that we are losing some lives over there but it's it's one of those situations uh that we all need to get behind the uh the soldiers and uh we need to thank them whenever we run into them in the grocery store in a restaurant and really uh, to pay tribute to the families because you know families go through a hardship when their husbands or their spouses are you know at war for the freedom that we enjoy every day. Now at different times, my wife and I and her mm -hmm. father worked for El Paso Natural Gas. He was the chief mm -hmm. inspector for the natural gas company for a while. And uh, I worked in construction on various projects and chemical plants. My wife was a secretary for mm -hmm. them and a PBX operator at one time. Oh, wow. And, and uh, do you ever get together with any of the old El Paso Natural Gas people? Well, it's, it's funny you should say that. We actually just last week have uh, went to a retiree roundup. Back when gas company was very strong in El Paso, El Paso Natural Gas used to have what they call a retiree roundup and it used to be held at the Waco Club. And a lot of people would drive their RVs and motor homes to the Waco Club and they would park there and spend the weekend there and then the following Monday they would have a wonderful luncheon well, we outgrew the Waco Club, then we went to the Camino Real downtown, then we outgrew that, then we went to the El Paso Country Club, we outgrew that one. Mm -hmm. So we ended up going to the El Paso Convention Center. Well, as, as, as some of the El Pasos might know, back in 96, they had a big, big downsizing. And a lot of people lost their job in back in 96. Many and of our friends lost their jobs. I, I was with them for 31 and a half years and six months from retirement, I, I got that big old act. Mm -hmm. But anyway, right after that, um, the, the corporation decided they weren't gonna do this retiree roundup. So some of the gas company retiree decided that they would continue this retiree group. And they formed a group called the Rusty Pipeliner. And s since 96, the Rusty Pipeliner has a monthly meeting where they have a breakfast. And the second week in October, or actually this year, it happened to be the first week in October, they have a reunion for the Rusty Pipeliner. So they had one last Thursday at the Vista Hill Country Club. And we had one of the representatives from El Paso Natural Gas as their speaker. Well. Uh, in the same time, about two months ago, I received an email that they, some of the, the younger gas company people who have lost their jobs are currently working in other companies. Some work for Electric Company, Texas Gas, University of Texas, UTEP, uh, Community College, they're all over. Right. They all worked for El Paso at one time or another, but they, since they were young, they still had to go out and find another job, so now they're working somewhere else. Well, the email I got is that they wanted to have a kind of retiree roundup to try to gather up all the people to see what everybody's doing now. So I'm part of their committee to help get the word out in the community for a special dinner on November 5th, which is a, a Friday evening. Uh, we'd love to get the word out. Uh, please give me a call at 549-5031. We would love to have you come and join us for a little get together. Uh, we currently have about 130 people signed up to attend and to attend the, the little get together. And so it's it's, it's great company. Uh, most people have that have lived in El Paso one time or another 
knows what a wonderful company they were. It was a very family-oriented company. Very family-oriented. Uh, they were community-minded. And in fact, after I got laid off at the gas company, I worked for the YMCA as their executive director at the Northeast. And I used to give tours of the facility, and I would point out that the gymnasium, $750,000 gymnasium that was donated by El Paso Natural Gas. You go, you used to go to the UTEP football game, you saw the scoreboard, donated by El Paso Natural Gas. Everywhere you went, you saw where a company had donat donated money for a particular cause in the community. You know, I've, I've decided something in this mm -hmm. interview. You don't have enough to do. No, I don't. We've got to find you something else to do. Yes. We've got to find other organizations that you can be a spark plug for. Do you understand that? Yes, I do. <laughs> I, I'm glad you mentioned that because uh, I, I'm also the current president of Showtime El Paso. Um, that's a subscription series, right? That's a subscription series. We, we sell season tickets for a, a wonderful, wonderful live entertainment that we bring to the Abraham Chavez Theater. Uh, well, we have two minutes left. You better give us a number on that if you want to. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I just happened to have a little brochure. <laughs> okay. It just happened to. <laughs> just happened to have a brochure right here. This is the El Paso Showtime. Uh, we used to be called the El Paso Community Concert. Um, and so the phone number is 544-2022. 544-2022. And you could also find us in the, on the website, El Paso showtimeelpaso.com. Okay, so if they want to discuss particular shows and how to get tickets for this season remaining and next season, then you're the spark plug they need to talk right. to. Right. We'd love to have you come and join us, and I would mm -hmm. like to invite you and Shannon to come and join us. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> for those of you watching, uh, do you realize how much energy this <laughs> fellow has? And he got his citizenship in the United States when he was 11 years old, and look what he has contributed to this country to the city of El Paso. Jimmy, I want you to know that I love you a great deal. You're a great American. Well, you thank you very much for the time. Oh, it's God wonderful to have you. Uncle Sam wants you to keep on working. That's right. And we want you to keep on watching Perspectives El Paso. I'm Leon Blevins, also known as Uncle Sam.